The smashing thermite demonstration is an excellent way to show a reaction that is somewhat uh, dangerous and some people are fearful of in a very safe way in a classroom environment. Uh, the concepts that the smashing thermite teaches are a variety of concepts. With this demonstration we can teach single replacement reaction, we can teach redox chemistry, we can also teach activation energy and collision theory. So it can be used in a variety of places in your curriculum. And this is a demonstration that I think is worth repeating more than once. Sometimes teachers are fearful of repeating an experiment or a demonstration. But what I find is that if the students get over the wow factor the first time around, then they're ready to get a little bit deeper into the theory and the learning that comes around the next time when they see that process. So I would encourage you not to be uh, hesitant to repeat demonstrations that have multiple teaching points. What I have is a large sphere which is coated with aluminum, uh, excuse me, with iron oxide or just plain rust. And we're going to take and we're going to coat that sphere with a piece of aluminum foil. Then another sphere also coated with the iron. And what we're going to see, first of all, we're going to talk collision theory for just a moment with this. With collision theory, it's very much like the hand blasters that are sometimes used to teach this concept. That is the concept that in order for particles to react, they must collide, and then they must reach the minimum energy that's needed, which is called the activation energy. So if we bring these two spheres together, no reaction that is visible takes place at all. But if we take these spheres and bring them together a little harder, we're colliding but we still have not reached the minimum energy that is needed to make this reaction take place. And the reason, let's take a look at the chalkboard, would become quite evident. If we take a look at a very simple energy diagram, we see that energy would be increasing here. So we have our spheres, the iron oxide and the aluminum, starting off at some amount of energy here. They have to reach a relatively high energy level, which would be the activation energy, to make that reaction take place. If we just bring them together slightly, they don't reach the activation energy. We see no reaction taking place. So we have to reach a very high level of activation in order for this to take place. And once that it does, we're going to have an exothermic reaction ending up at a lower energy level than where we started. And the reaction that's taking place is iron oxide plus aluminum, making aluminum oxide and iron. And we will have energy that is released. And we will see that energy in the form of heat light and sparks. So if we come back up then, what we'll do is we'll bring the spheres together and we'll see if we can get this reaction to take place. So we may want to dim the lights at this point as we see what's going to take place. Lower please. We getting a nice reaction? Oops. I think that's good enough. So, rather interesting, the reaction has caused the foil to kind of pop, and we've gotten those nice sparks. Now, what are the sparks that we had flying off? The little sparks that were flying from that are actually very sharp, very hot pieces of iron, as indicated by this reaction process. So we actually had tiny little pieces of molten iron that were being formed, and the energy, the light, that was being released in the process as well. So that's the smashing thermite in terms of taking a look at that. You can also use this reaction, as I mentioned earlier, as a single replacement reaction. We talk about those when we talk about types of reactions. So here we have aluminum replacing iron to form the aluminum oxide. A nice easy way to demonstrate that reaction with a very visually stunning process. The other way that we can use this reaction is when we talk about redox. Because what's happening here is that we have an oxidation reduction reaction taking place between the iron and the, uh, excuse me, the iron oxide and the aluminum as we make the products of the aluminum oxide and the iron. And so that's a very, very nice way to do that. There are other methods where you can take, react this together, but the safety factors of making the thermite reaction take place are things that I don't feel comfortable with, but this is something that is very easy to do. Now I would give you one hint in terms of making this process work. I often see teachers who try to work this process and they smash the two iron balls together. And that does not produce a very good reaction. If you noticed when I did that, I struck these with a glancing blow. 
so that I was hitting them with speed, but I was glancing them down sideways. That tends to produce a better reaction for me, and you might want to try that for yourself. So instead of bringing them straight together, try bringing them together at a glancing blow. That's the smashing thermite reaction. It's a great one. Give it a try. Thank you.